guys welcome to my channel today's video is going to be about my experience with having a home water birth and a hospital birth i got a couple of questions sent in um, that i'm also going to answer so i have two boys so both of the births were supposed to be water births um, at home it didn't necessarily work out that way um, for both of them i'll start with my firstborn um, his birth was so special and it was honestly like one of the most fun days of my life. Um, I, he was actually born on my grandpa's birthday, which makes it extra special for me. I was really close to my grandpa, so it was just amazing. The pregnancy was awesome. Um, the entire time I knew I wanted to have him at home um, and I was seeing a midwife. I had like the sweetest midwife ever and all of the midwives that worked um, at the, I guess it's called a midwifery, I'm not sure. All the midwives that worked at that specific place were all so sweet and I just loved going there and meeting with them. It felt so much more um, personal than um, my experience with a hospital. I find with midwives, like you literally feel like you're going to meet with a friend or something, you know? Like they just have this vibe about them. Um, it was it was awesome i'll tell you how i came to the decision of using a midwife basically i watched uh, a documentary on netflix called the business of being born so if you haven't seen it check it out i'm gonna put a little picture of it so that you guys know which one to look out for but it was really informative and as soon as i saw it i just knew i was like i need to have a home birth there's no way i'm having a hospital birth and watching that video also um, opened up my eyes about uh, epidurals um i feel like i have a pretty high pain tolerance like i've pierced myself throughout my life i got my tongue split you know i've experienced some things um so i felt like i wouldn't need an epidural but after seeing that documentary i just knew like a hundred percent i was not going to do it and i'm not judgmental towards people who do get them obviously everyone you know lives their own life and stuff but for myself after learning about you know the risks behind it and all of that i just said there's no way i will get an epidural basically i got this um tub that's like meant for giving birth inside of and you buy a liner if you're not actually going to buy the tub you can just rent it and then you buy a liner that goes inside of it um and filled it up with water and then I put some rose petals inside of there. And um, basically I was, I, I think my water broke at around 10 p.m. Um, and basically it, I just like went and sat on the toilet and then I remember, um, basically I didn't want anyone to really be near me. I just wanted to be on my own and do my own thing. So I didn't want the midwife to be called. Um, and I guess later on, I was like making all kinds of noises, like mm, 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 like literally like an animal. Like I felt like I was an animal, like making like intense noises that I would normally not make. <laughs> and uh, super, I felt like kind of embarrassed, but like it just reached a point where I was like, I don't even care. These sounds are helping me right now. And, um, I went into the shower because it just felt really nice to be in the shower while I was going through labor. The water I found was helpful. And um, then I guess my midwife was called because she opened up the curtain and I was nervous. I didn't want her to check how dilated I was because I was really nervous that she would check me and be like, oh, you're only two centimeters dilated. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, I've just been in labor for like how many hours and I'm only two centimeters. So, uh, yeah, that was my worry and she she came I believe it was 10 a.m. The next day So I was in labor for like 12 hours. I think already um, And when she checked me she was like you're 10 centimeters and I was like, oh, that's exciting So I was like really close to having the baby I probably could have had the baby on my own if uh, she didn't show up in time or something um, and uh, They had laughing gas so I had some of that and I was like almost, I kind of like wish I just didn't even have it because I was already like at the end. You know, I pretty much went through like all of the labor without any, you know, pain relief. So, you know, I could have done without it, but I guess I just wanted it. And, uh, and then it was time to push and 
I remember one thing that was frustrating about the uh, giving birth in the pool in the tub was that I felt like I couldn't get enough of a good grip so like I kind of felt like I was like slipping around a little bit but other than that I loved it and it was incredible um I had a student midwife and my own midwife um and the student midwife was she was so sweet also like I'm so glad that I let her uh come and like be a part of everything um I think my son was her first catch like when he came out she grabbed him and like pulled him up to me so like he came up between the it's like I think I gave birth to him like on all fours so I was like literally like a cat <laughs> giving birth so then he came out and I picked him up and like scooped him out of the water because it's so cool when they're born uh, underwater like they're still not breathing air right so they can stay underwater and then you lift them up and I remember my son was like crying and I was like the first thing I said when I looked at him was wow I think my aunt came in the morning so she was there watching when I gave birth and I had a scarlet macaw at the time so my parrot was in the corner also watching me give birth and she was like right in the corner of the cage like she was like right in watching the, all the action um and um basically when you have a home birth you have a lot more flexibility with what you want to do so I don't know if you guys know about lotus births but it's a lotus birth is when you leave the baby attached to the placenta until it falls off naturally so a lot of us are kind of conditioned to think that you're supposed to just cut it and move on but um you can actually keep it attached and let it happen naturally um which i really wanted to do but at the time my partner wasn't into it so we didn't do it but um we let it attach i believe it was like for a couple of hours maybe like two hours or so so it's called like a partial lotus birth and then because you want all of that blood to go you know into the baby instead of just cutting it and like leaving blood in, into the placenta and stuff um so after that we um we instead of cutting the cord we got to burn it with candles so i have this i have them on this picture frame thing. so i have the candles that we used these were the candles that we burned my son's uh umbilical cord with and I'm thinking if I smell it, maybe I'll get some flashbacks. But, um, so I saved their um, umbilical cords and their placentas. Um, let me find it. So here is his umbilical cord. I don't know if you can see. Will it focus? I love it. Oh, it smells so good. It smells... It smells like a flower mixed with cinnamon and it's like very sweet. I know you guys think I'm crazy for sniffing this, but it's part of my son, so I love it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the the uh, hospital birth umbilical cord. I hope I didn't lose the other one, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna look for it after. It's it's here somewhere. It was I just took it out of the picture frame. But uh, so yeah. That was an awesome experience. I was breastfeeding while the placenta was still attached and it was just like, I felt like it was such a magical experience, really. Like it it was so incredible. And I'm not even kidding, like when I tell you guys, I genuinely had fun. Like it was so much fun. I know a lot of people get scared of giving birth and stuff, but you don't have to be scared. It's natural, we're meant to do it. Our bodies do it. Look at all these animals that do it. You know, they don't have, uh, all these people helping them and whatever necessarily like we're we're just it's fear that goes into our minds and stuff and if you just remember like cats give birth to and cows and whales and blah 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 like you're an animal just like they are you can do it don't be scared <laughs> um so yeah there are risks with home births of course because um you're not in a hospital and maybe you can't get the help you need as fast as you can, but midwives are fully trained to deal with, you know, anything and they'll transport you if you need to. Um, but I definitely recommend a home birth if you can have one and uh, definitely a water birth too, because it's so nice being in the water. Um, I felt like it just like, you know, helped the baby come out easier if anything too. Um, I think I had a
burst blood vessel or like a rip or something and I was getting the stitches like in my bed which I thought was pretty cool that's my home water birth experience now I'll tell you about the hospital birth which was very 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 different <laughs> so during my second son's pregnancy it was like a really difficult time um, I was moving back and forth it definitely wasn't a peaceful pregnancy like with my firstborn so all of that stress obviously can build up and affect the baby and I went in for an ultrasound um, I can't remember how far along I was so my first my firstborn was born right on his due date and then my uh, second had to be induced and um, so I went in for an ultrasound oh, I, thought, I thought a baby woke up but they didn't so I went in for the ultrasound and then um, they had concerns about the way the baby was growing so they wanted me to give birth ASAP because they thought that I could um, like the baby could die in my stomach and then be a stillborn so I was really upset and obviously scared. I really wanted to have a home birth. Like I just had my mind set on a home birth. I was terrified of giving birth in the hospital, especially because my first birth was like incredible. So I was so scared that now the second one wouldn't be the same because it was gonna be in a hospital. And obviously there are so many restrictions. So um, I actually still had a midwife, but my midwife came to the hospital um, and I was induced, which was like honestly the most intense thing I have ever felt. Like the pain was unreal. With my firstborn, like I didn't time the contractions or anything. Like I was just going with the flow. And I feel like I didn't even necessarily like know when I was having contractions and stuff at first. But then with my second, the medicine they give you, the Pitocin or whatever, is so intense and so strong. Like the pain I was feeling with that birth, with that labor was like nothing compared to the first. I literally thought I was going to die from the pain. That's how bad it was. And um, I had to have like, um, I don't I wish I knew the words, but it was like something like uh, hooked to my belly so they could monitor the baby, which made it so annoying because I couldn't just like, I wasn't comfortable to like move around freely like I was with the home birth. I like to labor on all fours. Um, so that was really comfortable for me and I found it helpful that the midwife just like kept reminding me to breathe and like just her saying that would like bring me back like okay just breathe because otherwise I was just like I was starting to like lose it from the pain and I still didn't get an epidural um because I told you that documentary just pushed me away from it um I had the laughing gas which I felt like was really frustrating because I had to hold it and like I didn't want to hold it uh and then when I had it, like I tried to like keep it on my face and it kept falling off and then it was just, it was not helping. So I had my sons, um, they're 10 months apart. So it was like back to back, like it was time to push. I was like, I'm either gonna poo or the baby's coming out. <laughs> I remember saying that. <laughs> and I was on all fours, so then I flipped over and then I remember it was literally just like one push and the baby just like flew out, it was like Psh! And uh, I had told them that I wanted to grab the baby, but like in the moment, I just like wasn't even thinking about it. I was just like, get the baby out. And then, <laughs> and um, so I, I held him, put him on. He was so small. He was literally like five pounds and I think two ounces or something. Really, really small baby. Um, and he was just like a couple of hours shy of being a, a preemie, which is a baby that's born um, premature. <laughs> I wish I could remember the time. I want to say like before 37 weeks, um, but I can't remember all that stuff now. Um, and I also had requested that I got to keep the uh, placenta attached for a certain amount of time. I think I waited an hour and then you can't light candles in a hospital, unfortunately, or else I would have done the uh, candle um, burning also to burn the umbilical cord. So, um, they just gave me scissors and I cut it and then they wrapped up the placenta and they let me keep it because I had heard a lot of people say like hospitals will steal your placenta because it's full of all kinds of good things and blah 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 so I made sure to ask I was like no I want my placenta don't take it away that's for the babies um and some women actually eat their placentas which I like had considered but what my plan was is when the boys get older and they ask me where did I come from I can be like I'll show you let's go to the freezer and let it kind of defrost and then 
you know, open it up and show them like the placenta, like you literally came from this, you grew inside of this. Um, I just thought it would be a cool lesson. And my midwife told me that, one of my midwives told me that she actually uh, planted hers with a tree, which I thought was such a beautiful idea. So that's something I'd like to do one day maybe. Um, so I realized that I forgot to show you guys uh, my other son's umbilical cord. So here it is, it's really tiny. You can literally see the, like right there, that's where the hospital clip was. Let me see. I don't know if it will focus, but look at the difference. Home birth, hospital birth. Yeah, so both experiences were completely different. Another thing I wanna kind of uh, talk about is that when I had my first, uh, my firstborn, I was only able to produce milk for like the first two months and then my milk completely dried up and sometimes that happens if you get pregnant right after. I was pregnant literally a month and a half after giving birth to my first. Um, sorry guys, I keep like looking at the, the lens right there and then I look at myself. It's really hard for me to like talk into here. I feel like if I'm talking and I'm looking at myself, I feel like I'm talking to someone, but if I'm looking right there, I feel really awkward that I can like kind of see myself. So sorry that I keep like looking here and looking here and looking here and looking here. I'm still getting used to this filming stuff. And um, so yeah, back to the breastfeeding. So I had a breast reduction when I was 18 and I feel like they completely cut off my nipples and reattached them because my boobs were so big. Um, so I feel an effect on my breastfeeding ability, um, but I really wanted my sons to still have uh, breast milk. So my midwife actually told me about a group um, called Human Milk for Human Babies and it's uh, where other women donate their breast milk to you and then you can feed it to your baby. So my sons had breast milk from over a hundred different women and I swear they have intense, you know, physical abilities and they're super, super smart. So I feel like all of the different breast milk they had actually influenced that. Obviously I can't prove that but that's just my belief. Um, I feel like it was so good for them. And I'm so thankful to all those women who donated their milk to my sons because they help them grow and be strong. And uh, I really am not a fan of formula. I have had to use it when I couldn't find any breast milk because it's just, you know, by luck. Um, people post and you try to get it. And I would drive like two hours to go get the breast milk. I didn't care how far it was. I, I wanted breast milk for my sons. I feel like if you're able to have a home birth, do it. Obviously, if it's you know, for medical reasons you can't and you're forced to do it in a hospital, I would still use a midwife because it's a lot more of a personal experience. When you have a midwife, it's it's a different bond than going to a doctor. I'm not even sure what they're called. It's not a pediatrician, that's a doctor for kids. It starts with an O. I can't remember the name. OBGYN, whatever that stands for. <laughs> OB is for short, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I really love, um, I loved having midwives. I loved both experiences, although they were so different and one was, you know, um, painful and whatever. In the end, I got both of my sons and that's all, you know, I really wanted. But um, I'm really glad that I got to experience such different uh, births because now I can relate to women who have had both and it makes me feel like I'm more well-rounded in a way because um, I love you know learning new things and what better way to learn new things than experience them yourself you know so yeah it was really great and uh, if you guys have any other questions feel free to ask me I'll record another video about this if I missed anything that you know you were curious about I really love being pregnant I love breastfeeding I've actually considered being a surrogate that's how much I love it I would absolutely love to be pregnant and give birth all the time it's it's so much fun, it's so special, and I just feel like magic. Honestly, after I gave birth, I was like, I feel so sorry for men that they don't get to experience giving birth and that they don't get to experience breastfeeding. And I know a lot of times we say, oh, they're so lucky that they don't have to do it because it's painful. But I mean, put the pain aside and think about all of the, you know, think about the incredible experience that we get to go through. We literally get to, you know, bring life to earth and. Women are so magical, it's it's incredible, you know. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning about my son's births. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up if you like this video, follow me on Instagram, send me a message, tell me what other videos you wanna see because I'd love to record them. 